Let's define a little bit what that is. I mean, what's different about a leader versus a BYB leader, a becoming your best leader? Welcome to the Becoming Your Best podcast with Rob Schellenberger. I'm your host, Jamie, and you're listening to the show that is guaranteed to help you transform your life and achieve results that otherwise would have seemed difficult or even impossible. Each episode is a mini training where you'll learn how to achieve extraordinary success. Rob is a best-selling author, former F-16 fighter pilot, Air Force One advance agent, world-renowned keynote speaker and corporate trainer who's trained Fortune 500 companies around the world, executive coach, father of four children, and the CEO of Becoming Your Best Global Leadership, Mr. Rob Schellenberger. All right, welcome to all of our Becoming Your Best podcast listeners, wherever you are in the world today. This is going to be a short, yet what I hope will be a powerful podcast for you, and it really is something that is a result of you. <laughs> and what I mean by that is there have been organizations and people out there that start to talk to their managers and leaders and start to say to them, you know, thank you for being a BYB leader. And this came back to us and is filtered through and around, and we've heard this, and we thought, you know, let's define a little bit what that is. I mean, what's different about a leader versus a BYB leader, a becoming your best leader? And so our team went to work on developing a manifesto or a creed over the last couple of weeks of what that means and what that looks like and, and what this means to you as you lead your family, your personal life, your team, your community, in whatever capacity you're leading in. And so this is a part of a movement, a becoming your best movement. And one of the things that that means is that BYB leaders are a new breed of leaders who are no longer satisfied with mediocrity. BYB leaders strive daily to be their very best in each area of their life and to treat others right. BYB leaders are committed to excellence. They find a way to do the impossible. BYB leaders are confident, optimistic, and determined to make a positive difference in their homes, schools, organizations, and certainly the world. Negativity, pessimism, and complaining have no part in their lives. BYB leaders know that they don't have to compromise their personal life or family to be successful, contrary to what many other entrepreneurs believe. And lastly, this is part of a family of true leaders. And so what is a BYB leader? It's someone who encompasses the 12 principles and is no longer satisfied with mediocrity and wants to strive for excellence, is no longer satisfied with the status quo. So a BYB leader is true to character. They lead with a vision, manage with a plan, prioritize their time, live the golden rule in business and in life. They build and maintain trust with their key peers and associates and family members. They're effective communicators and listeners. They don't get, they, they aren't quick to anger or wrath and they're quick to listen. Slow to anger or wrath is the better way to say that. They innovate, they're accountable, constantly seeking new knowledge, living in peace and balance, and they have an attitude of never give up. And that's a BYB leader. It's not just a leader. That's why we're no longer satisfied with the status quo and you are part of a becoming your best movement that is gonna encompass the world. It already is spreading to so many different parts and you're the movement. I mean, we're hearing stories from people and we don't even know how they came to find Becoming Your Best, except that they heard it from a friend, a family member, and that it's really starting to transform their life as they start to think like a BYB leader rather than just a, an average or normal or regular leader, if you will. So welcome to the movement. This is something we're all in together. We're no longer satisfied with mediocrity. It's something that we're striving to do personally in our homes and certainly in our businesses. Now, as we think about what it means to be a BYB leader, I wanted to share with you a couple of personal stories from the last two weeks. One of those is when I had the chance to go down to Mexico about 15, 14 days ago and join my son, who was down there on a piano tour uh, with a small group of about eight people. And they did some performances in Mexico City, then down in Merida, which is in the Yucatan area. And then lastly, they went to Costa Rica and played in several different uh, locations there in Costa Rica. It was an incredible experience for them. They were gone for two weeks, and I just joined them for those three days down in Merida in the Yucatan. And one of the things we did while we were together is we went swimming in these Mayan pools. They call them cenotes down there. And one of these was the coolest experience. I mean, each one was this very unique and different cenote. Well, the last one we went to, we walked down this set of stairs into this dark cave. And our guide had a little flashlight. And, 
And we went out and stood on this pier, and here's the water, and it's more than 40 or 50 feet deep, so you can't touch the bottom, and it's this dark cave. So you can just visualize and imagine this. She, si she shines her flashlight out past the pier, so it extends out maybe 10 feet, and she just asked everyone to jump in and wait for her. And you have on a little life jacket there, so it's not like you're at risk of sinking there. So we all jump in. You have the teenagers in there with us, and it's just cool. We're in this totally dark cave. You can't see anything that's behind you. And the only thing you can see is her light there on the pier shining in. Well, after everyone had trickled in, it's completely black. She jumps in there with us, and she told us that she's going to take us on a little tour and to follow her, to follow the light. And so sure enough, she starts just slowly wading around the outside of this, this area. And so we're all just following her, and the only thing we have to rely on is her light. And it was the most incredible sensation. I thought what we were doing was going around what felt like a lazy river. So if you've ever been to a water park in the summer and, and been on the lazy river, you know what that's like. It's just this little, we could call it a river, maybe 10, 15 feet wide. And it felt to me like we were going in a circle. We were going left, left, and then gradually starting to curve right and totally disoriented as to where we were. I thought the entrance was way back behind us somewhere. So after doing this for maybe 10 to 12 minutes and going into what I thought was a big old circle, she stops and she's showing us all these stalactites coming out of the ceiling and the floor, at the sides, just, just an amazing cave and place. And then she paused and the lights flipped on in the place. She turned the lights on in the whole place. And what it was, was this circular cave that was probably 150 feet by 150 feet. Totally different than where I thought we were. I thought that there was this big old rock in the center and that we were going on this lazy river type experience around this rock and that we were eventually going to circle our way back to where we started. That wasn't the case at all. We had stayed in this single cave the entire time. And when the lights flipped on, my perspective of where we were totally changed. I had no idea that we were in the same open cave the entire time and that we could have just swam back and forth across in the dark. And all of us are just like, what? Are you kidding me? We've been in the same place the whole time. It was just astounding to me that that is what had happened. And I thought, you know, this is a real applicable life lesson. Are we just cruising through life focused on a very narrow area of life and not seeing all the possibilities that are around us? And this is part of what a BYB leader does is they don't have tunnel vision of what's in front of them. We see much more of the picture around us rather than this little narrow focus. And a BYB leader lives a life by design rather than a life by default. And there's a big difference between those two. One is very intentional and focused about leading their life by design and being intentional about their day and their time focusing on those principles that will help make them a great leader as they lead their own life, their family, and their teams. And so just like with the cenote here, how many times in life do we think we're in one place, figuratively speaking, and the reality is we're in a totally different place if we could simply turn on the lights and see what's around us? And the thought from this is that, you know, when one door opens, most people would say another closes. What I've learned is that when one door opens, another opens and then another opens, and then another, and another. And the more that we grow our, lo our knowledge and start, and you start to apply the principles in your life, just like I've tried to do in my life, these doors start to open, our perspective changes, our paradigm shifts, and we start to see an entirely new world around us that we didn't see before. And I've seen this happen all over the world in different companies and organizations, lives, and it doesn't really matter who the person is, when they apply the 12 principles, they start to become a BYB leader and their expanse and their paradigm opens up. And I'll just give you one more example of this. I've had people ask, you know, how do you give someone desire? And it's a great question. I don't have all the answers to that one yet. There are two things that I've been able to see have an impact on people's desire in my life. Number one is when they start to read. Reading is a powerful habit. 43% of college graduates will never read another book the rest of their life. It's certainly one of the habits of the most successful leaders. Great leaders are readers. And so reading books can open up a world of possibilities in our life. It can give us desire that we may not felt like was there, or it can boost our motivation. I mean, how many times have you ever felt down or like you're a little low on motivation or desire? Oh, I just don't want to do that. <laughs> Man, that's when we need to start reading. It activates parts of our brains that otherwise will stay dormant. So that's one. The other 
that I get asked, and this all ties back into being a BYB leader because we're talking about your children, your employees, and even you and I. The other thing that I would suggest makes a huge difference is to put ourselves in situations where the spark and fire can ignite. And so part of that is investing back into ourselves. We do this, we do this religiously. We'll find one or two seminars where we can go out and be a part of their seminar to keep our skills sharp. Uh, and so, for example, last week, I went and spoke to the FBLA annual convention. It was their 75th anniversary, the Future Business Leaders of America. So here are 14,000 people in this amazing convention center in Anaheim, California. Incredible youth. I mean, when we say the Future Business Leaders of America, I'm confident that in that room, you have a future president of the United States. You have people who are going to discover the cure for cancer how to colonize Mars, and discover how to travel at speeds that take us outside our solar system. So truly, that was a room of the future leaders of our world. It was very inspiring to be their keynote speaker. I mean, it was just incredible to watch them. Well, in that process, I took Bella with me, my 12-year-old daughter. Why? I mean, she's already an amazing young lady. I wanted to give her a chance to have another spark, to see something that sparks an idea in her, so that when she sees that a door's open, she walks through the door and sees that there are three more doors that open as a result of it. And sure enough, we hadn't been back from that convention more than two days when I noticed that she was outside watching the sunset. <laughs> I thought, okay, what's she doing? She came back in and I asked her, Bella, what are you doing out there? She said, I was watching the sunset and dad, I got an idea for a new book. <laughs> I started laughing and I told her, well, you better go write it down. And so I went into her room maybe 20 minutes later and she had a page and a half of notes of this new idea of her book. And if you're one of our podcast listeners that frequently listen, you know that her and I together published a book called A to Z, The Best in You and Me. And it's an awesome book designed for kids between 5 and 12 years old so their parents can sit down and read it with them. And just as a side note, her website is thebestinyouandme.com. Thebestinyouandme.com. That's where you can get her book, just as a side note. Uh, so here she's done a book and after this conference that sparked some sort of new idea in her, she went out, watched the sunset, and boom, there's the flood of ideas. She now has like two or three books lined up in her queue to write, and she's 12 years old, turning 13 in September. And so what are you doing right now in your life to spark an idea of possibility? Are we just leading our life by default, or are you leading like a BYB leader and living your life in an intentional way to where you can open a door and there's another three that are sitting open right through that door? And so this is a short podcast. I simply wanted to share with you this movement that you are now a part of with us, that jointly together, we're going out there to transform the world as BYB leaders and not just your normal leaders, that we're no longer satisfied with mediocrity, that you and I strive daily and commit to do our very best, and that's a commitment to excellence. We find a way to do the impossible when many other people would say, you know, that's impossible. You can't do it. We go out and do it. And that's part of what being a BYB leader is. So I hope just this few minutes that we've had together today has been helpful for you. Quick 12 minutes together. Uh, the thought is now, what does this mean to you? Is it a one-time thing? Or is it something that you really want to take the journey on for a lifetime? I had, and we're going to wrap up with this. I had a person who recently emailed, I'll say, say three months ago about, and they said, oh, Rob, pre-week planning has totally changed my life in almost every way. Now, this particular person said, you know, he was spending more quality time with his kids. He started killing it as a CEO. He was so much more productive than he had ever been. And he also said, you know, I have a total sense of peace and fulfillment. Those are powerful words to be able to say that coming from where he was. Now, what's interesting is you fast forward a few months later, and I saw him and he said, you know, I really haven't been doing my pre-week planning. I, man, I just missed it. And so I asked him, well, why not? <laughs> He said, there's no reason. You know what? I have no idea. It had totally transformed my life. It was such a powerful part of my life. He couldn't figure out why he had stopped doing it. Now, he recommitted to jump back on that horse because it had been so impactful. And the irony is, I asked him, well, how are you feeling now? And, you know, what do you think his response was? Yeah, I'm stressed. I feel like I'm losing control of my life again. Well, hello. I mean, we're all in the same boat. Let's do the things that work and commit to do those things. And if we drop the ball once or twice, let's get back on the horse and not, not allow that to deter us from this movement of becoming your best. So this is what it is. It's a commitment to excellence. Go out and memorize a couple of inspirational quotes each week. Figure out ways that you could be transformational in whatever sphere and part of the world you're in. Because a BYB leader goes the extra mile. 
They do things that most other leaders don't think about doing. And that's this new movement that is starting to sweep the world. The hope is to reach a billion people. And every one of us plays a key part in this. It starts with you and your life and leading your family and showing them what a great leader looks like, whether you're a mother or father. Show them, them what it looks like to be a transformational person and leader. So it starts in your home. And then it goes to the business, your organizations. And what does that look like and not being satisfied with the status quo? So we hope you have a wonderful day. We'd love to hear from you and your stories. Support at becomingyourbest.com. Next week, stay tuned for an incredible podcast and interview. And if you haven't already, go look at the Breakthrough Leadership Conference in October, as well as the Breakthrough Entrepreneurs Conference designed for entrepreneurs this coming September. And if you're listening to this down the road, then check the website becomingyourbest.com for the current dates. Hey, we're wishing you a great day. Go out there and make a difference in whatever sphere and arena you're in and let us know how it's going for you. Let's go have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Becoming Your Best podcast. Don't forget you can find more great episodes of the podcast at becomingyourbest.com forward slash podcast along with great show notes, a full transcript of the episode and all the links and resources mentioned in the episode. Please share your comments and questions with us. We want to hear from you. The best way you can show your appreciation for our podcast is to leave an honest rating and review on iTunes. Now it's time for you to take action and truly start becoming your best. Remember, good, better, best. Never let it rest until the good is better and the better is best. Thank you.